it dawned on me that there are probably going to be some people, such as close friends and family, that are going to get mad at me because of the way they found out about all of this. But, let me try to explain. I posted the first video and it said I only want to have to say this once. And in the few people that know, because a few people already knew, they've known for weeks, such as my mom and stepdad and my sister, my employer, and maybe three or four of my closest friends that were my initial mental support people. And let me tell you something about this. It is not easy to talk about this. I don't want to have to talk about it, so I'm going to do it by video. And if that makes you mad, so be it. When you get cancer, you can tell people however you see fit. But I'm doing it the way that I want to do it. And if you can't respect that, I really don't care. It's that plain and simple. I'm going to tell you, unless you've walked on my shoes, you have no idea how you feel 86,400 times a day. Get off your high horse that you wasn't included in that group of those first individuals. And just realize, there are some people that it hurts to tell what I'm saying in this video. You don't want to hurt people. I don't want all the questions. I don't want anybody to ask me anything. If you ask me anything about it, I'm just not going to answer you, period. Now in the last video, I talked about having the second biopsy. In the second biopsy, there was a, um, I don't know if it's a gene or some, some way, um, that that they were able to type this cancer and that is um, a type 16 what they call p16 now I'm gonna go over this the um, cancer started in the tonsils and then spread to the lymph nodes with a growth on the side of my neck that automatically makes it a stage 4 cancer but stage 4 doesn't mean that it's terminal stage 4 only means that it's in more than one location okay so um, this particular um, cancer is caused by believe it or not an STI uh, a sexually transmitted infection um, you've probably heard about it in the news recently. They come out with a vaccine that caused a bunch of people to get upset a few years ago called the HPV vaccine. HPV stands for human uh, papilloma virus. And I have to read some of this off of the internet. I'm actually on the CDC's website that has a pretty good write-up about this. And I'm just going to read to you what it says. Um, because there is a good chance that if you don't already have HPV, that you will get it sometime in your lifetime. Um, currently, there are about 79 to 80 million Americans infected with it, with 14 million added every year. And those ones that are being added are actually teenagers in early 20s. Um, there are also over 200 different types of HPV and not all of them cause cancer. Only a few types cause cancer. Um, other types can cause things like genital warts. Um, there are no vaccines and you can't go get tested for it. Um, from what I understand for females 
during their regular exams. I don't know if it's a pap smear or what it is. Some regular exam women get. There is a way to detect HPV or if they've had HPV. Um, but there's really not, not anything for men. Most men know they've got it when they get cancer. Um, HPV is something that the body realizes shouldn't be there and gets rid of it and for the most part you never ever know you had HPV but there are certain types of HPV that cause a genetic transformation in proteins in the body and those proteins basically lay dormant in the body sleeping basically and eventually they wake up and that's basically what causes cancer um, HPV is the most common cause of cervical cancer in women uh, can also cause cancers in the vulva vagina penis or anus can also cause cancer in the throat including the base of the tongue and the tonsils Cancer often takes years, even decades, to develop after a person originally got HPV. Once you have the cancer, the HPV is long gone. There's no way to trace where it come from, who gave it to you, or whether or not you transferred it to anybody else while you had it. Um, You know, there's a lot of things you can do to keep from getting HPV. Um, using condoms, they also have something called a mouth gate for like oral sex. Never used one. Maybe that's why I have cancer. I don't know. Um, there's also the vaccine. The vaccine for HPV generally is treated on someone between the age of nine. And 11 years old it can be treated up to the age of 26 and after the age of 26 there's some risk involved and you know I'm obviously not in those age groups so I've never had the vaccine um, they basically say that the only way that you will not get HPV in your lifetime is if you are a virgin the person that you have sex with is a virgin and you and that person stay in a relationship only with each other for the duration of your lives and we all know that just don't really happen these days right So, uh, how common is HPV? I already said that 79 million Americans are currently infected. About 14 million people become newly infected each year. HPV is so common that almost every person who is sexually active will get HPV at some time in their life if they don't get the vaccine. Some of the health problems include genital warts, cervical cancer, and there are also some warts that you can get like on the bottom of your feet and your hands that, believe it or not, are caused by HPV. The ones that cause the warts generally don't cause the cancers. So that's kind of good, and I think I just picked up a tick. Yep, just pulled a tick. Let me get rid of this tick real quick. You know, there's always stuff happening on the homestead, just the way it is. Smash him down there. Let me grab a lighter before he runs away. So while I'm in the video, in the middle of this video, of course, something happens on the homestead. It needs immediate attention. That is nothing uncommon. Now that I've got this tick taken care of, let me turn some lights on and show it to you. Don't even know if you're going to be able to see it. Right there's my finger. At the end of my finger is a tick. See it right there? Little black dot. 
that's what happens to ticks on my property. All right, so now that I got it taken care of, I actually felt it crawling on the back of my neck. Where were we at? Oh yeah, so some of the statistics about HPV. Um, general awards. Before HPV vaccines be, were introduced, roughly 340,000 to 360,000 women and men were affected by genital warts caused by HPV every year. About 1 in 100 sexually active adults in the U.S. has genital warts at any given time. Cervical cancer. Every year, nearly 12,000 women living in the U.S. will be diagnosed with cervical cancer, and more than 4,000 women die from cervical cancer, even with screening and treatments. There are other conditions and cancers caused by HPV that occur in people living in the United States. Every year, approximately 19,400 women and 12,100 men are affected by cancers caused by HPV. Um, there's some other information about, you know, if you have HPV when you're pregnant. Um, other information on health problems, which I've mostly just covered. And then, you know, there's basically, you just need to search for HPV if you're interested. Um, so, I wanted to clear up what exactly um, was believed to be the root cause of the cancer. They found that P16 signature in my tonsil biopsy, which is a, uh, a trait of HPV and the ENT surgeon told me that he couldn't honestly say that my cancer was caused by HPV because some more research needed done but I have cancer and I have that genetic trait that P16 HPV trait uh, was in my tonsils so you know, I, he can't say for sure that's what caused it, but it just seems odd to me that it causes cancer and I had the trait. So, there's that. Um, I'll probably do some more follow-up videos, I'm sure, on this. I plan on doing videos over my treatment. Um, one other thing. Um, while I was recording the last video... I got a phone call from the UC Cancer, uh, UC Barrett Cancer Research Center, which was my patient navigator, the person that kind of like helps you get through all this mess. And they told me that the dental surgeon would probably see me this week. Now, today is Tuesday. And she's talking, they will probably see me this week which means Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. But I called the number she gave me like 22 times over an hour and a half, and it was busy every time. So I'll try to call them again in the morning, but just to kind of show you that everything's moving very fast, because, think about this, not only do I have to worry about battling this cancer, I have to learn how to eat with no teeth in only one to three days. Um... The way that I was told the treatment will go, um, I started to follow up or touch on in a previous video, but what happened was the phone rang, I couldn't really finish it out, and I was kind of rushing to get it done. Um, so, here's how it works. Seven weeks of radiation, five days a week. Monday through Friday, I'll get radiation. On week one, week four, and week seven, I'll have chemotherapy. I was told that probably for the first four weeks of treatment, which would include the first treatment of chemo, the first four weeks of radiation, and then the second treatment of chemo, that mostly I'll be able to do the stuff I normally do. Might have some nausea and that sort of thing. They give you the medication for that. Um, but as far as like... All the things that happen from the fourth week forward don't happen until about then. So at about the fourth week, 
your skin on the outside of your neck will look like it's sunburned. It may even, the skin may even actually peel. Um, it will become hard to swallow. I've been told it's kind of like you're trying to swallow glass on the inside of your throat. Um, I've also been told that it'll be like your saliva glands will basically get destroyed by the chemo and radiation and you won't be able to spit and then what spit there is will get really heavy like a mucus and uh, you know so from the fourth week on is going to be when it gets really hard for me as a person um, and I, I just I don't really know what's going to happen until I get there I'm only going by what the doctors tell me now I've said this before in a previous video, the doctors tell you the worst. What they believe will be the worst outcome is what they tell you because they want you to be prepared for the worst. And then if the worst doesn't happen, then you know you don't get that mental hit that would have happened otherwise. So I'm already up to 16 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this video. That's the things I wanted to talk about. There'll be other videos. Thanks for watching.